Hi, this is Peter. Hi, this is Sandra. And we are Medievalist.net. And today we're talking about the Borgias. Yeah, the this is uh, Season 2, Episode 4, and uh, this is where we finally see the King of France get his uh, just rewards for his invasion of Italy. Right. And uh, this is another episode where Cesare steals the show. There's no mention of Juan in this episode. It's all Cesare, which I don't mind because I think he's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, basically what happens is he comes across... Uh, Micheletto comes to tell him some bad news and lets him know that uh, the nunnery where his former lover Ursula was... Uh, living has been uh, ransacked and all the nuns including Ursula yeah. murdered. Yeah. Um yeah, he comes across he, you know, he goes in uh to see and he finds all the dead including Ursula and yeah. Um it wasn't as a touching scene as I think it could have been, but um it kind of uh, it was a bit flat for me that kind of scene where he sees her and he, he mutters off a few lines, but it's all very dark and kind of dingy at that at that time, so, you know, I, 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 it wasn't, I thought it could have been done a little better, it could have been, uh, I actually thought that he had, like, they had some of the best lines in this particular episode, like, I mean, the whole episode centered on vengeance, so, yeah. um, he had some, <laughs> some really, really choice lines, um, Vengeance, well, Rodrigo, you know, after he, he, he decides, okay, I'm going to take revenge on, on this group um, and, and do to them what they did to the nuns, um, you know, Cesare has this uh, father-son talk where Rodrigo's like, you know, vengeance is patient, uh, you know, here's the right way to do it, here's the wrong way to do it, if you have to wait a lifetime. Yeah. That's the whole point. It was very interesting. I like that. They, uh... And his best line, this is the line I was looking for, she's released all my heart of all emotions but one, vengeance. Okay. And that's like, sets up the entire yeah, it does. thing of the show. Thing. And and he, he's able to kind of get it fairly quickly, actually, by uh, getting Micheletto to recruit a bunch of other kind of guys like himself. Mercenaries. Kind of mercenaries. And they start these kind of attacks and... Uh, as you said, uh, they're talking about guerrilla warfare against uh, little units of the French army that are going around plundering the countryside. Um, they're scouts. So they're scouting just ahead of the French army, and they're known for being, they were known for being particularly nasty. And um, what what is interesting, what uh, Cesare finds out later after he captures some of these guys, you know, he sets, he ambushes them in a village and he tortures them, is that Giovanni Sforza was behind mm -hmm. directing them to attack that particular nunnery to strike back at, at Cesare. So he's just, you know, yeah, internally I... enraged by this and um, then makes it his mission to go out and be kind of like a vigilante. Uh, one, <coughs> one interesting aspect I'd like of it is he, he, he lets... Micheletto do, is doing most of the dirty work and the torture scenes and, and you know, there's a, a part where you can see that Micheletto is is starting to come unbalanced um, <laughs> starting you know like like you know like before he's been a cool kind of calm but you know you could kind of see like the you know where he basically executes a person um, and it's almost like pleasurable. A, Pleasurable, and I don't, you know, it's like a lot of things are going through his head. Probably not good things. So, um, <laughs> and no. like, and you wonder what, you know, like, like you've got this number two guy that's doing all this stuff, and yeah, you wonder what's going through. Like, he has to have some character development too. Like, you're wondering what's going to happen with him uh, because you just can't keep doing this. You know, like, yeah, um, I mean, he's the ultimate assassin, and it's a good thing Cesare has him on his side. But, um, yeah, he seemed to take a little too much enjoyment out of that scene where he uh, gets rid of that uh, torture victim. Yeah. But, um, and then meanwhile, Rodrigo meets with the King of France, who's pissed and threatening him and all this. And Yeah, you know, well, Ro Rodrigo, <coughs> you know, he is kind of, you know, plan and strategy for all of this is... 
he wants the, the king of France to be defeated. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, he wants his own allies to come off badly in this as well. And um, somehow be able to become the strong person. Because he doesn't really have an army compared to the others, right? But, like, against, like, Milan and things like that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting how he's thinking those two, three steps ahead. Yeah. Where... But yeah, he does meet with the king of France, and like his old goal seems out of this is to be able to get the money <laughs> of, of all this booty for himself. Yeah, for the mother church, and and the best line he has yeah. is he tells I don't know if it was the Duke of Mantua or yeah. Milan or Mantua. Yeah. He says to him, you know, so you do anything? Yes. He's like, you'll give all the money to the mother church, and the guy mm -hmm. kind of stops, and he's like. God's blessing has a price. Yeah, yeah. It's like not nothing is for free. God's not giving you a free ride, buddy. It was kind of funny. It was like the perfect. And then the guy's like, "Yeah, okay." Yeah. And um, you yeah, know, that's that's the, that's the Borgia uh, that I kind of you know imagine like you know like always kind of yeah. sneaky, you know, a little on the devious side. So yeah, I thought that was great. And then um, and then you know back to Cesare, he's he goes out in the middle of the night while. Um, Rodrigo is at prayer with the Duquesa of Mantua, <laughs> yeah. and he's screwing her too. And um, although to his credit, she does come on to him. Yeah, and kind uh, of. She she's like he's like no no, and she's like yes yes. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 mind you, he didn't fight her too yeah, hard, yeah, yeah. but I'm just I just want to, in Rodrigo's defense, say yeah. that she she did ap yeah. approach him. Oh, it's good to be the Pope, I guess. You can forgive yourself, <laughs> uh, like, the next day. But at the same time, uh, and I have to say, Jeremy Irons is loving his job. <laughs> but. For sure. They, uh, yeah, like, you know, like, it, it, the whole idea was that uh, Cesare finds out how the, where the kind of, uh, the gunpowder for the cannons are being kept and is able to make that strike the night before the big battle. Uh, to, to, which just you know, makes the, uh, the King of France's cannons um, not uh, not useful in the upcoming battle, which basically turns aside. We don't see anything that happens in this major battle. We just see the end of it. We uh, we see uh, so. Cesare basically turns into Bruce Willis and Die Hard and just blows everything up, yeah. and it's like you know, the whole thing goes up. Yeah. And and Rodrigo, while he was screwing the Mar uh, the Duquesa thought it was thunder and rain mm. and then he finds out from yeah. her husband that no there's some great guy running around yeah. blowing crap up yeah and a so, roman <laughs> too you know so <laughs> so he asked cesare he's like do you have anything to confess and he's like no i had a good night how about you <laughs> it's like that was a great yeah back yeah and like i that you was know funny I have not, oh, as like you, I have nothing to say about last night, you know? <laughs> it's it's like, like, I kept good company, as did you, Father, yeah. kind of with us. <laughs> so he doesn't say anything, because Cesare basically threw it back in his face, was like, I was out exploding things, and you were screwing somebody, so oh. we're not going to have this conversation, <laughs> it and, was great. And, and in the end, in the, the Duke of Mantua gets his honor, but the Pope gets the money, so... Honor and valor. Yeah. I thought that was another funny thing, you know. Rodrigo's talking about honor and valor with this guy after he's just bedded his wife. Hey. <laughs> who was is, who is a common whore prior. Yeah, <laughs> prior yeah. Which is kind of funny. I think the idea is, you know, like, to make this, the Duke out to be a bit of a fool, like, you know, for, like, just thinking about honor, just thinking, you know, that's all that mattered to him. Um... And you can see, like, a guy like Rodrigo has uh, a more worldly attitude. So, just, you know, like, in, as do we, right? You know, like, you know, that's why, you know, as, you know, we're, like, we're rooting for Rodrigo here. We, we kind of see that, you know, as an audience, um, how, you know, honor and... Uh, and valor and stuff like that. That's not like a great the goal that they should be running to, right? So, and so we're all we're all with Rodrigo on this one. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I thought I thought it was really good, and uh, yeah, I just I enjoyed that. I really actually really enjoyed this episode. You know, it's uh, Cesare is just again and again showing up on how 
he's just so much better at being a soldier than his brother. He's in the wrong job. It's like he might as well wear a placard around his neck that says, wrong job, dad. <laughs> and just, it's, it's yeah. just funny. Well, I think we, we, we have to see like how Cesare is going to get his character. Like when he... Uh, and it's not a spoiler that you know he you know he has uh, more career ambitions that you know and as the show goes on we'll kind of see them uh, unfold. So, but uh, yeah, like I you know I thought again it was it was a, a great kind of episode to showcase how Cesare is a, a really brilliant, if not you know unscrupulous kind of guy. So yeah, and uh, I just again again I can't wait till the next ep to episode to see what unfolds because you know it was kind of funny there was almost like a comic book moment like the king of france is in his like uh wagon thing yeah yeah and, he, and he's like give me something to kill me oh, yeah. and he's like yeah. <laughs> it was like yeah. it was like an evil villain uh, being yeah, foiled yeah, yeah, right yeah. out of a comic like batman i, I, I guess that's <laughs> the end i guess that's the end you of the king of meddling france kids yeah. They, it was great. I love that scene. Okay. He's a great actor. He's fan the king of the guy. I have to uh, find out who mm -hmm. he. He's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a fun character, a fun character, a fun uh, king of France. I have really enjoyed it. So, um, the kind of subplot in all this episode uh, involved the women. Uh, I didn't care for it. This is kind of boring. It's like, oh, okay, we're gonna go run around the town. And yeah, I didn't get I didn't get that like you know it's yeah. uh, you leaving know. Lucretia in charge of the Curia was kind of lame too. I didn't buy it. I was like, uh, I can't even see historically. No, no, no like, obviously, like, there's no, just no. <laughs> they play. There's a lot of playing fast yeah. with the, his facts, but uh, you know what? It, but even as it's like Lucretia kind of bakes a, tries to show by baking a cake that they should give water and food to the poor and somehow she does it but you know what it doesn't work as a scene for me like mm -hmm. I, did, I didn't see why that actually was persuasive i thought it was filler and i, I you know and then there's the scene with the not so julia fernese and lucretia yeah. and uh they're asking her for her help and she's telling them that they have to go into the brothels and i was just kind of like yeah it, what's the point of this of, like i just it was filler. For me, everything yeah. else, you know. They even had a filler scene with Della Rovere. It was almost like a Christopher Walken cameo. Oh, it was like, yeah. oh, oh just, hey, here's Della Rovere uh, for five seconds. Let's just throw him on screen for the hell of it. Yeah. It was kind of funny. Yeah. He's like, yes, there's. he's put his daughter in the seat of Rome. And then it was that was it. That was his big scene. So, yeah, but uh, it was good. I'm excited to see more. And... Uh, it's the second time in a row, two, two, two for two for Cesare. Last mm. week he was a savior. This week he saved the day again. Yeah, he's he's uh, a he's a Italian Robin Hood, they, <laughs> or anti so, Robin Hood or something. <laughs> someone should give him political power and see what he does with it, right? Cesare. <laughs> the uh, the papal states need um, a guardian, right? It's definitely. not gonna be one. So yeah, oh, definitely not. So tune in with us next week for another fantastic episode of The Borgist. Have a good night. Good night.